Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we are jumping into a review of two Scotch Ales from two different brewers, uh, both uh, Scottish, at least that's where the brewers are headquartered, we'll uh, elaborate here. Uh, we're going to be starting with um, probably my absolute favorite Scotch Ale of them all, uh, this beer. Um, was one of the first Scotch ales I ever got into and I absolutely fell in love with the style because of this specific beer here and uh, much to my uh, chagrin uh, gosh back in the early 2000s they stopped uh, importing this to the United States and it was not available for a period of about 10 to 12 years and uh, was recently brought back when the brand changed hands and ownership several times um, this is McEwen's Scotch Ale. It's 8% uh, ABV and McEwen's was founded and is headquartered in Edinburgh, uh, Scotland. Though this beer specifically is brewed in Bedford, England by their uh, parent owner company, which I believe is Marston's, um, which was sold to them from Heineken, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it kind of followed a chain and flopped hands and uh, now it's available in the United States again, has been for about the last three, four years which is a boon for Scotch Ale fans because this one's fantastic. Um, our second beer today uh, is Innocent Gun. This is their Bourbon Barrel Scotch Ale, and this was their original release. It is their flagship beer. Uh, they, as well, are based in Edinburgh, Scotland, and this one is 6.6% ABV. So uh, pretty close ABVs on this. Uh, one barrel aged, one just a standard Scotch Ale. So we're gonna dive into the both of these and see what they have to offer and how they differ. And uh, we're gonna jump right in, starting with uh, McEwen's, and that's 8% ABV. Okay, so jumping right in with beer number one, this is McEwen's Scotch Ale, 8% ABV on this one. Um, as I stated in the intro, this is the specific beer that got me to fall in love with the Scotch Ale style. It's uh, very deep, very layered, very complex, and it is, as you can tell by the ABV, a big beer. Uh, no question about it. For bottle art, it has a tartan, kind of as the theme on there, that is the pattern that you find on a Scottish kilt that is called a tartan. Um, the brewery was founded in 1856. I forgot to mention that. It does say on the label, so if you're curious, you won't forget. It tells you on there. Um, I am guessing that the pattern uh, for the tartan pattern that uh, a kilt the tartan, uh, I am guessing that that is the actual pattern for the McEwen clan. Uh, they are all based on historical clan um, uh, patterns and it's based on the family lineage. So without having done the research on uh, McEwen clan's tartan, I would be willing to bet that the color pattern that they're showing on the label here is indeed tied to the family's uh, tartan. Um, nonetheless, let's get this poured right in. That's about the extent of the bottle art. Ah, uh, yeah. Beautiful dark brown, as is typical for a Scotch ale. And I'm actually pouring this into uh, one of my porter glasses today, but I do find that porter glasses work quite well for Scotch ales. Let's do stout glasses, in fact. All right, got that in there. And it is a beautiful deep brown, as you expect from a Scotch Ale. Um, you can see light through it. It's not super pitch black like a stout, um, and it's not black. It's a very, very deep brown, uh, deeper in color than a brown ale, um, for sure. Uh, it is relatively effervescent, so it does form a head, but it does tend to break down reasonably quickly. It's a mix of medium, small, and large carbonation that comes up so it does tend to break it away and indeed I can already see the pad floating on top is already breaking away though it will have a reasonably decent cling to the sides. Let's jump in and give it a sniff. Ah smells great. It smells rich and malty, slightly sweet at the same time and just a hint of a uh, boozy quality to it. Um, you can often get that in scotch ales particularly the higher ABV ones and uh, Scotch Wee Heavies, that's also reasonably common, particularly the higher ABV ones, which that tends to be a higher ABV style anyway, Wee Heavies versus Scotch Ales. This is on the higher end of the ABV spectrum for Scotch Ale to be certain. Um, but uh, let's just jump right in, give this a sip. Oh, 
there it is. Oh boy. It's been such a long time. It's so good. It's so good. This is such a great beer style. And it's, it runs kind of the gamut. It's as varied and interesting as the world of stouts, honestly, for my opinion. They can run in all different directions. This one is a bigger Scotch Ale. And it's really bigger in terms of ABV and the way that the flavors develop. It's not bigger in the sense that it's a heavy beer. It's not. Um, at 8%, you might think, wow, that's going to be a big, thick, heavy beer. It's absolutely not. The body really is much lighter uh, compared to what the ABV would suggest. It's really just a medium body. And the mouthfeel, it's not thick and viscous. It's actually light and silky and creamy. Um, and it's really got to do with how effervescent the beer is naturally and uh, kind of the ratio of the size of the carbonation bubbles that p plays a big part in the mouthfeel in a beer. If you have a bunch of very fine champagne-like carbonation and it's quite active, that's typically going to generate a rather uh, silky, creamy mouthfeel just because it's so active, especially if you're swishing it around the palate to really let it coat so you can taste it all over all the different uh, sensory regions of your uh, tongue and taste buds. It does impart a very silky mouthfeel, and uh, it's it quite it's quite nice rolling around in the palate. Um, I'm going to jump in another sip. Uh, we've already talked body mouthfeel. Let's let's explore how this finish develops. It's uh, very interesting and enjoyable. Up front, malty sweetness with a mix of booze. That sweetness slowly starts to subside, and then the malt backbone comes into play. It's nice caramelly. It's a very caramelly malt backbone. And then that starts to progressively get more intense. Still mixes with a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of booze. And then it kind of apexes with all three of those flavors combining. And then it gets really, it, it goes in a completely different direction. And it's interesting, it kind of comes out of nowhere. The caramel and the sweetness and um, the slight boozy quality meld and then they just all kind of richen. And then it takes on this kind of more roasty quality, um, not dissimilar to say uh, standard Colombian coffee, just base medium roast. It doesn't taste of coffee, but the way that the booziness and the malty sweetness and the um, kind of caramelly nature combine, it turns into this amalgam at the apex where the highest intensity of flavor is, and it becomes roasty and it takes on a richer, deeper, roasty quality, but it continues that ride of sweetness and booziness and maltiness, just adding another layer of depth with this roasted edge, and then it kind of completes all the way down. And it's a very linear finish, kind of it rides up and they all kind of pop in, then they meet and peak at intensity, and then it's just a straight tra trajectory down to the end of the finish. Nothing really overshadows anything else. It's a beautiful, even blend, of roasty, caramelly, malty, and sweet. And uh, just still that little hint of booze that's in there. It's a delicious, very well-balanced, very well-rounded beer. I absolutely love it. Um, it's been such a long time since I've had this one. It's a real treat to get to jump back in. I'm gonna take my time and uh, sip on this, come out with my scores. When we come back, we will jump into the Innocent Gun Bourbon Barrel Scotch Ale. That one's 6.6% .6 ABV. Okay, moving on to our second beer of today's Scotch Ale review. We are moving to Innocent Gun. This is their bourbon barrel aged Scotch Ale. This was the very first and original beer that they released. So it is their flagship uh, beer for their brand. It's 6.6% uh, .6 ABV. And uh, they, as with McEwen's, are based out of Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, this is... Uh, really not much so to speak in terms of label art. It's just basic. They tend to have just basic innocent gun and various scripts and designs, but understated. Nonetheless, let's uh, get this one poured right into the glass here. All right. That was a really nice pour on this one. I keep getting better with uh, every attempt. I don't always get it right, but 
do pretty well. Okay, holding it up to the uh, light here, and you can probably already notice on camera, this is significantly lighter in color, certainly than the McEwen's and then a standard Scotch Ale. Uh, as a rule, they tend to be a deep, rich brown, a little uh, darker than a brown ale, a little lighter than a porter. Um, this is quite a bit light. This almost looks in appearance about like an average Imperial IPA, a very deep caramelly color. Um, that's how this appears. So it's very unique in terms of appearance uh, for Scotch Ale. Um, let's give it a sniff here. Oh, it smells really nice. Uh, as is typical with Innocent Gun, you can really smell the barrel aging um, that they do. That's kind of their thing. Uh, they may have some non-barrel aged beers out, but I've never seen one. And I've had quite a few different Innocent Gun offerings. All of them have been barrel aged and uh, that definitely brings a uh, totally separate element to the table. Um, while it did form a pretty good head, you can already see that it has collapsed uh, pretty quickly here. It's still got a little cling on the sides of the glass, but no real head uh, retention, so to speak. But another sip, smells great, can't wait. Let's jump in. Mm. 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 Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh, as with uh, most innocent guns, as the finish continues to develop, it gets uh, progressively more intense and layered and complex. All right, this is a very big beer. 6.6% .6 ABV, you would think, maybe not as much, but it, it most definitely is. Okay, in terms of a Scotch Ale, your standard Scotch Ale, this varies significantly not only in appearance, but certainly in terms of flavor profile. Typically, you're going to get rich, deeply roasted malt backbone in a Scotch Ale. You'll often get uh, peated or smoked malts in the back. This has neither. The appearance and uh, what I was stating about it visually looking very much like an Imperial IPA, the uh, flavor profile that comes through is actually remarkably similar in, in terms of the flavor of the base malts. Um, there's no deep, rich roasted, there's no hint of coffee or chocolate malt at all. Um, it really is caramelly in the way that it presents its malt bill, much like a standard Imperial IPA does. They tend to be caramelly, buttery, toffee. This has that same uh, backbone structure to the malts, so it deviates quite significantly from your average Scotch Ale. Um, nonetheless, that barrel really adds a ton of elements. This just have to smell again, it smells so good. Um, it adds a ton of elements and layers of depth and flavor, and it is quite complex. So I'm gonna have to dive in a few times to make sure I get them all. So first I'm gonna go back in for body and mouthfeel. Then I'm gonna describe everything that happens in the flavor profile and how it develops through the life of the finish. So one at a time, I'm gonna jump in for body and mouthfeel. Body's medium, bordering on medium heavy. It's um, got a much more robust body than the ABV would lead you potentially to believe. Mouthfeel, it's creamy and it's got some thickness at the same time. It's a quite smooth, quite creamy. It's got very, very fine carbonation in there, um, but it does have a stickiness about it. And it's got a nice thick wet finish as well. So it really does linger around the palate. All right, now in terms of flavor. Up front, very, very big and prominently, you get that bourbon barrel aging. That bourbon comes through quite strongly it also imparts a slight booziness to the beer, uh, which I like in a higher ABV beer, though this I would not consider to be particularly high ABV, but it is barrel aged, so I don't mind it at all. It uh, pairs well with the other flavor profile, and um, really the booziness doesn't come through so much on the aroma, it's really strictly in the taste. Now, in terms of those kind of toffee, uh, caramelly flavors that come through in the malt, um, it also does have kind of a buttery quality to it. So you kind of get an interplay of caramel, toffee, 
uh, buttered toffee, buttered caramel, and because it's bourbon barrel aged, that kind of mixes with it, so it tastes a lot of, uh, say, buttered rum, uh, kind of butter scotch. It's got a mix of all of it, and it, it just keeps building. And in, in tandem with that, there's a whole uh, ton of fruit that come through in uh, different layers. Uh, various uh, fruit will pop out in the midst of moving through this butter and toffee and caramel goodness that mixes with that bourbon. So I'm going to jump in for a third time, see if I can pick them all out. Sweetness, kind of like a combination of grapes and raisins up front before it even starts with the malt. As that interplays, it gets progressively richer and then it starts to take on a slight flavor of perhaps apricot. It's, it's rich, uh, kind of juicy stone fruit. Uh, plums come through on the back end and then it starts to taste really buttery. Um, that's really the bulk of the flavor ride of the fruit. So it's upfront sweetness, then it mixes with that booziness, all of the caramel, toffee, butter, all the interplay there. Then you get strong uh, grape and raisin, and then it opens up into really, apricot is probably the closest stone fruit it reminds me of, and then kind of plums in the background. And it just keeps tasting the bourbon and lingering, and you keep getting pockets of uh, buttered toffee, buttered caramel, just butter and rum and scotch and it all just interplays and all the while you still get this bourbon back, bourbon back. It kind of peaks in, in intensity of flavor when the apricot and kind of plum character traits come in and then it starts its descent but it's not linear. It's very much a bell curve up and a bell curve down and it kind of peters out. In terms of length of the finish, um, it's, it's quite long. Uh, the bourbon really sticks and you still get that lingering buttery coffee, uh, toffee and caramel uh, that just keeps popping in and mixing with that bourbon. Oh gosh, it's probably been a good 30 seconds since the last sip I had. I can still taste that lingering bourbon and that buttery caramelly toffee uh, quality. It, it really sticks around. And it does have a thickness to it. It does have some viscosity to it but it's not that thick or viscous that you would expect it to last that long, but it really does linger around the palate. And it's a nice clean finish too. Um, it's got that wetness to it. It's got good staying power. Um, very, very good beer. Very, very unique in the realm of Scotch Ales. Uh, this is kind of a one of a kind in terms of Scotch Ales. I can't think of another one I've ever had that's like this, either in uh, appearance or in um, uh, terms of how the flavor develops and what it actually tastes like. Typically, they're more deeply, richly roasted. They may have a malty sweetness up front, but the malt profile is completely different. This is very much a one-of-a-kind Scotch Ale. I'm going to take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores, and when we come back, we will get both beers ranked from top to bottom. Okay, now that we've gotten to enjoy both of these beers, we're going to get them ranked. Uh, starting with the McEwen's Scotch Ale 8% ABV, uh, again, both brewers are based in Embra, Scotland. Um, this was actually brewed in Bedford, England by the owner of the parent company, but uh, the McEwen's as a brand is actually based in Edinburgh. Um, nonetheless, uh, starting with the aroma on this one. Uh, this is a pretty pronounced aroma for a Scotch Ale. Uh, there are certainly some that are more pungent. Uh, but this one does stand out quite a bit and it gives you a really good sense of what the beer is going to be about before you even sip in. The aroma does uh, more or less match the flavor profile. Um, I give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, for the taste, really, really good beer. Um, I still enjoyed this one vastly. Uh, this was the beer that got me turned on to Scotch Ales in the first place and it's always going to have a special place in my heart. I, I still really enjoy it. Obviously, over the last 20-ish years. I've, I've had many, many different Scotch Ales and some that I would deem vastly superior, but this is still an excellent Scotch Ale. I do recommend. I still really enjoyed it. I give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, for the body, the body on this is one of the categories where it's a little disappointing. At 8%, that's a really hearty Scotch Ale, honestly. Um, it's, it's on the upper end of an average Scotch Ale ABV, 
and it's got that many fermentables in it, you really expect that to impart a lot more to the body than it actually belies. It was really medium at best and not even encroaching on medium heavy. So I gave it just average. I gave it a five for the body, uh, for the mouthfeel. Very, very nice mouthfeel. Very silky smooth, just absolutely deliciously smooth mouthfeel. They really rolled around the palate. Not as viscous as you might think, but in, in tandem with its smoothness and the way that it just kind of coats around the mouth due to how creamy it is, it does help uh, the beer kind of stick around. Um, I give the mouthfeel a 10. For the finish, related to the mouthfeel, although the body is a bit lackluster, just kind of average, that mouthfeel is so creamy and, and lush and thick that it does help the flavors that come through in the beer really stick around the palate for a pretty good length. Not as long as you would expect for 8%, but it's certainly above average. I gave it an eight out of 10. Uh, head and retention on this one, it was okay. Um, not great, uh, not bad, just kind of middle of the road. I give it a high, a high end of average because it collapsed a little quicker than I would have liked, even though it formed well. I gave it a six. Okay, for the appearance on this one, um, this is a textbook Scotch Ale. It's not as dark and deep and richly dark as, say, a stout or really even a porter, but it's certainly darker than a brown ale. It's really somewhere in between a porter and a brown ale on average, and this is textbook. It gets a 10 out of 10. Um, for the balance, this is a very, very well-balanced beer. Um, a Scotch Ale is a style that's really all about the malt and how they come through and the character traits that they bring to the table. And this one is... Um, Rather prototypical, but it's it's so big and bold in the way it presents itself. You get sweetness, you get booziness, you get roastiness, you get a slight bit of char, and it all comes together and just blends and keeps evolving. It's a fantastically balanced beer. I gave it a 10 out of 10. A uh, feeling in the intangible. Well, I've had some that I do uh, think are superior to this. Um, you know, it's still, uh, it's my subjective category. I still absolutely love this beer. I think it's a fantastic example of a Scotch Ale. And, um, you know, it's the one that got me into the style in the first place. I still absolutely love it. Feeling it intangible gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, finally, is an example of the style. This is an excellent Scotch Ale. It's certainly well above average, but it isn't upper echelon. Um, there are many bigger, bolder, uh, even more well put together, exciting uh, versions of Scotch Ales out there. But this one still is very, very good. It gets an 8 out of 10. That brings the total score on McEwen Scotch Ale to an 84 out of 100. So certainly well above average, um, really good score. And it's one I do recommend if you've never had it and you're a fan of the style, uh, this is an original. It's been around for a while. Um, moving on to our second beer. This is the Innocent Gun Bourbon Barrel uh, Scotch Ale, 6.6%. Um, this is their original beer that they released when they were founded. I think it was somewhere around 2002, three or four. Um, they're a relatively young brewer. Um, and this is their flagship beer. Uh, the aroma on this one, it's nice. And the bourbon does really come through and uh, it certainly is more pungent than your average aroma, but it's not as uh, pungent and big as you would expect it to be uh, given the ABV and the barrel aging. It does smell nice, but it's not super pungent. Uh, I give it a seven out of 10. Uh, for the taste on this one. The taste is one of those categories I really had to think on how I wanted to rate it because it's so unique and different in the realm of Scotch Ales. It's really, really a fantastic beer. I, I cannot emphasize that enough, but it doesn't really hit the mark for what a typical Scotch Ale actually is or tastes like. It's very different, even without the barrel aging. In fact, without the barrel aging, I that's a scotch ale really but then you get the barrel aging in there and it adds a whole nother dimension and it's a very interesting beer with a lot of different rides in the flavor profile but it isn't a prototypical scotch ale so i had to make a deduction uh and i only docked one point because honestly the beer is that freaking good um i gave it a nine out of ten uh for the body being only 6.6 percent .6 and coming on the heels of the McEwens. It's uh, very surprising what a larger, more robust body this beer has. Um, I really think it's about as close uh, to perfection as you can get, uh, but I did dot the point because it wasn't quite there for me. I gave it a nine for the body. Uh, mouthfeel on this. Super creamy mouthfeel again, um, much like the McEwen's, but this had a heck of a lot more viscosity. And with 1.4 lower percent ABV, you know, it doesn't sound like a big spread, 
but if you're really thinking in volumetric terms, what ABV actually is literally alcohol by volume. So, okay, and to be fair also, this bottle's a little smaller, 11.2 ounces versus uh, full, or actually they're the exact same. So the same fluid ounces, 11.2 on both of these beers, but this one, 8%, you know, up the bottle is actual alcohol, whereas on this one, only 6.6. .6. So this has the higher ABV, uh, has more fermentables in it as a base, but this has a more robust body and it has a more viscous mouthfeel. So that really does tell you, even though it's 1.4%, it's not a big number, but when you start talking in terms of volume and what it does with the actual end product, it is significant. 1.4% doesn't sound like a lot, but it is significant. And it really did make a big difference. Um, this, I mean, I gave them both a 10 and this one deserves it. It even had more viscosity. It's, it's a fantastic mouthfeel. Finish on this one is fantastic. It is very, very, very long. The caramel, buttery, toffee, all the interesting fruit ride, the sweetness, uh, the malt, the roastiness comes in the back. Um, and that bourbon that just keeps going and going and that boozy quality that keeps coming back and mixing with everything and it just lasts so long. Perfect 10 out of 10. Um, head and retention on this one. Uh, pretty much poured like the McEwen's. Um, it formed a pretty decent head, but it got out of the way quicker than I would have liked. Um, still high end of average. It gets a six out of 10. Uh, for the appearance. The appearance on this one is not a classic Scotch Ale by any stretch. It's a nice looking beer. Make no mistake about that. It is a nice looking beer, but it is not really prototypical of a Scotch Ale. Um, I gave it just middle of the road. I gave it a five uh, for balance on this. This is a very, very well balanced beer. Um, just as with the McEwen's, even though it's got a different appearance and a different flavor profile from a standard Scotch Ale, it still is a story of the malts. So that part, it does stick true to the style. It, it is all about the malts and how they develop. And this has another ace up its sleeve with that barrel aging and how it just keeps interplaying. Um, I give it a perfect 10 out of 10, just exceptional. Uh, feeling in the intangible, absolutely love it. I give it a perfect 10 out of 10. Finally, as an example of the style, this is another category on one of these beers where honestly, I was a little torn. Um, I thought about this long and hard and decided to go with my gut. It is a fantastic beer by any measurement. It is a delicious beer, but appearance wise and flavor profile wise, it really isn't right for the style. And they can vary, but this varies significantly. It deviates significantly from the standard, uh, but the score is reflective, even taking that into account since I rank based on style. Um, of just how good of a beer this actually is because I still gave it above average. I gave it a seven. Um, for all, all intents and purposes, there's a lot about it that just isn't right for the style, but this is just a fantastic beer. It just is. I recommend this one equally to anybody as I would the McEwen's. That brings the total score on the Ennis and Gun Bourbon Barrel Scotch Ale to an 83 out of 100. So only one point apart, 84 and an 83 both completely different Scotch Ale drinking uh, experiences and both fantastic beers in their own, own right. I do highly recommend them to anybody who's a fan of the style and or has never tried them. Excellent beers, well worth grabbing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, likes help the channel, helps others find us. Subscribe will keep our videos in your feed so you don't lose us. And uh, if it ever stops popping in your feed, you can just clip, click on your subscriptions and go straight to the channel directly. And comments, uh, please, I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, uh, questions, suggestions, things you like, dislike, whatever you want to throw at me, just dump it in the comments. I am here for you and I am actively seeking your input. And uh, if you wanna make sure you keep in the loop and don't wanna uh, miss when our videos go live, you can just click the notification bell icon. It is right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, folks, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.